Good morning from Brodick on the Isle of Arran. Yesterday I drove a very scenic south loop here on the island. Today I'm hoping to drive the north loop. I don't have any plans, I'm just going to get in the car and drive and see what I can find along the way. Before I do that I wanted to show you the accommodation that I'm staying at here in Brodick. It is called the Belvedere Guest House. Excuse the mess, TV on the wall here. I've had breakfast just sitting on the bed there this morning. It is just a tray of cold meat and cereal and yogurt delivered to your room. The view out here is nothing special. You can just about see the sea over there in the distance, but the rain continues, unfortunately. And then over here, there is a little set of drawers with some coffees and a kettle on there. And I've got all my bits down there on charge. Here is a shot of breakfast this morning. I did take a quick video before I ate it. Looks much better that way. The room comes with a private, unattached bathroom. Wi-Fi included, free parking outside, and it comes to £60 a night, which was about the most reasonable accommodation I could find on the island. Right, hope you have enjoyed the room tour. Let's get to that road trip. I've made it six miles north of Brodick to a place called Corrie. This is the Corrie and Sanox Village Hall. Sanox is the next village I'll be passing through. Little information board here. And whilst I just walk up there, let me tell you about Brodick Castle. Because I did stop by, you might have seen on the video already, I was going to take a quick look inside, but the castle is actually closed today. Uh, it costs £14.50 for an adult and it is the most popular attraction here on the island. So that was why I was going to go and see it. But check this out. A little waterfall here in the village of Corrie. I was reading a book this morning over breakfast and the book said that Corrie is the most beautiful village on the island. We will see. I am just a little further north now overlooking the beach that I just walked up. And I've arrived at this little park area with benches and picnic tables. And there in the background are some huge rugged mountains, one of which by the way is Goatfell, the highest peak on the island. I'll be trying to hike that tomorrow, so check that out. In the meantime, take a look at these little white houses that line the waterfront here and the key area you can really see why this place is called the prettiest village on the island. It is a lovely area. And if I come round and just show you on my right side now, in the distance there is mainland Scotland. These red sandstone blocks were dug up from a nearby quarry. And this is the place, the harbour, the quay where those sandstone blocks would be shipped across to the mainland. Over there is the harbour. I'll show you that. It is a really nice little area. And while I'm going across there, let me tell you that the sheep that are over there and lining the harbour wall were actually donated from the Glasgow Garden Festival in 1988. They're still there, keeping a look over the key area. And then these pretty little boats and lovely, lovely beach. Look at that with the houses and the mountains behind them. What a beautiful place.
the Glen Sanox car park. This is a really good hiking area. I noticed that as I came into the car park, there was lots of signs with various different trails you can follow, differing in difficulty and in the time it takes to actually do the walk. This is a quick clip of the river that I've just videoed. It's coming down from the Glen. It is only about 10 seconds from the car park. It's just around the corner. You can hear it from where I am right now. But unfortunately, the weather is horrific. It is raining. And so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press on towards the next village. This is the village that receives the lowest amount of sunshine of any village in the whole of the UK. And sure enough, it is cloudy and it is raining, as you should expect when you come here. It is a village called Loch Enza, which is on Loch Enza, a seawater loch. And it is a very nice place. Let me give you a quick look around. You can see it's surrounded by these high glens. It is, by the way, the northernmost village on the Isle of Arran, and I am right in the northwestern point of the island. As I come round, you can see the lock, and then as I come round a little bit more, you can see the row of white houses that line the lock itself, and then over there is a castle as well. I'm not sure if you can make it out. It's quite a distance away. It looks like it might be on an island, so I am going to drive around, I think, and take a closer look. wind is getting up again which means there might be another storm incoming so whilst it's dry let me tell you that I have made it to the castle it is just behind me it was built in the 13th century modernized in the 16th century and it comes complete with timber stairs inside that could be retracted to stop enemies from getting access to the castle itself and also whilst it was being modernized in the 16th century gun loops were added to the wall to strengthen the ability for soldiers inside to defend the castle. It is in an absolutely spectacular area as well. You can see why they would have built a castle here. It is perfect for it with the water surrounding most of the structure and also these tall imposing mountains and hills going right the way around the bay. If you were an enemy coming to invade, you might have been put off by the sight of the castle and the hills and the water would have been perfect. Just before I do get on the road, lunch today is served from the sandwich station. Hot chocolate and a pork sandwich. Looking good, I've got to say. £8.75 for both. Big bits of lamb in there. I am going to eat up, I am hungry. And then I'm going to drive the west coast. Just stopped in a little village 
I was driving through and saw a few things that looked interesting so I stopped and I've come into this like little botanical garden area it looks like the the locals probably keep it walking down this way now and right next door there is a ferocious rapids cruising by there we go you can just about see it I am out of the car and following a trail. I've got a signpost here. It's the first one I've seen. There we go, that's where I'm heading. I believe it is pronounced Coddy and Locken or something of the sort. I'm gonna go through this kissing gate here. There we go. There we have it, make sure it closes behind me. There is a little locking mechanism on here. I guess it's to stop it slamming open and closed and keeping the locals up at night. Okay, right up this way. So let me give you a little bit of information as to where I'm going. This lock is a fairly isolated lock. It is two miles there and two miles back. It is mostly uphill and it is at an elevation of 326 meters that is about a thousand feet. It's going to take about an hour to get there and an hour to get back. There is always plenty of rain and rainwater to come down the side of the mountain. This is the footpath. Looks like a little stream. However, it's heading off in that direction. Someone's back garden is probably flooded. If I don't end up with wet feet at the end of this one, it'll be a miracle. I'm getting up with the clouds now. I can see a nice stream rolling down that hillside. And then that peak there is covered by clouds at the top. I can see the western seaboard behind me and I've come up against a bit of a problem here. It's another one of those little brooks where you have to climb across these stones but this stone that stone is underwater and that stone's quite a distance away probably doable but i'm gonna to have to be really careful with this one Ahead of me, I have got my first glimpse of the water of the lock. That was a much more intense hike than I was expecting. It has taken just over an hour, stopped a few times to take photographs and videos, but it was very steep, I've got to say, especially in the end. And the water was rolling down the pathways, or flowing down the pathways, I should say, making it even more difficult to get up here. But I'm here now and it is a glorious sight. I'll turn the camera around in just a second and show you. It is spectacular. There is nobody else around. I am two miles from anybody and it does feel very isolated. You could see up there, 
that's that peak I was showing you a little while back, saying, my goodness, how far does that look? I've got to say, right from the bottom, you can almost see the top as you're climbing. And when you get to that top, when you get to the ridge, you realize that actually there's further to go. So it kind of teases you along the, the trek. I think this is where the video is going to end. It is getting close to dusk. The sun sets at about an hour, so I've got about an hour to get back down again. I'll leave you with some shots and some scenery looking over the lake, maybe even some drone shots in a second. More coming tomorrow from Aaron. Hopefully, weather permitting, I will be climbing Goatfell, which is the highest peak on the island, just under 3,000 feet. This was 1,000 feet, and this has tied me out, so fingers crossed I get on okay tomorrow. Right, there we go, there's the lock. How spectacular is that? Thanks again for watching my video here in the Isle of Arran. Good night from this beautiful secluded lock.